In this video, we're going to begin discussing continuity at a point. For this problem, we're given a function that we see here, represented by a rational function, and then we're asked to determine if f of x is continuous at both x equals 3 and x equals negative 10. We're going to analyze each of those individually. And then we're also asked to say that if it's not continuous at any one of those points, we want to find the type of discontinuity that it is at that point. So when we're asked about continuity at a point, there are three things we need to have satisfied in order for our function to be continuous at that point. Namely, let's call these two values just arbitrarily, we'll call both of them c, just to use this as a reference. The first thing we ask ourselves is does f of c exist? If we plug these values into our function, do we return a defined value? Does it exist? The second question we ask ourselves is does the limit as x approaches c of f of x, does it exist? Is the limit defined? And lastly, we compare those two results. The limit as x approaches c of f of x. Does that equal f of c? If all three of these are satisfied, then our function is continuous at the points in question. Okay? So what we're going to do first is we're going to look at x equals 3. So at x equals 3. And let's start doing some math here to figure out if f of x is continuous at x equals 3. Sorry, that looks, that looks horrible. x equals 3. There we go. So the first question we're going to ask ourselves is, does f of 3 exist? So let's go down here and figure out what f of 3 is. So f of 3 becomes, makes this function 3 minus 3 on top over 3 squared plus 7 times 3 minus 30. Okay, so let's start evaluating here. 3 minus 3 on top gives us 0. On the bottom, we get 9 plus 21 minus 30, which evaluates to 0 on the top, 30 minus 30, which gives us 0 over 0. So this means that our value of f of 3 is undefined. When we reach this, when we return an undefined value for f of c, we don't have to go any further evaluating these two as far as continuity is concerned because this means that f of x is not continuous at x equals 3. So now what we do next is we look at the limit to determine what type of discontinuity x equals 3 is for our question. We have three kinds. We have a removable discontinuity, which is more commonly referred to as a whole. We also have a jump discontinuity, where if we look at the graph, the, the, the graph itself makes a jump at that value. And then the last one is if it has an infinite discontinuity. Each of those three names has a different uh, requirement that the limit has to satisfy in order for it to for our value of x equals 3 to be classified as that type of discontinuity. So what I'm going to look at first in this case is I noticed that by plugging in f of 3, essentially what we were doing is we were evaluating the limit as x approaches 3 of f of x by doing our trick that we always start with with limits as in passing to the limit. We plugged in 3 into f of x and received an indeterminate form, right? The 0 over 0 is indeterminate. When we get this for limits, what we can do is we can ask ourselves, is there any type of manipulation we can do to the function to maybe simplify it a little bit and see if our limit becomes more apparent as to what we're dealing with? So we're going to rewrite what our f of x was. And since we received an indeterminate form, what we're going to do is we're going to ask ourselves, can we factor this on the top and the bottom? And we can, right? This is a factorable polynomial here, and this is already factored. So let's see what happens when we factor that denominator of our function here. So we have x minus 3 over, and the two factors this becomes is x minus 3 times x plus 10. So we see here that x minus 3s, we have that we can divide those out, right? Because they're in the top and the bottom of the fraction, and they're parts of multiplication. So we can divide these out. So now our limit becomes the limit as x approaches 3 of 1 over x plus 10. So now let's see if we can evaluate this limit by passing to the limit by plugging in 3 for x again. So we get 1 over 3 plus 10 or 1 over 13, which is a real number. 
So that means our limit as x approaches 3 exists, but the value of our function at 3 is undefined. What this means is if we have that we know that f of x is not continuous at x equals 3, but the limit exists, what we have there is the type of discontinuity is a removable discontinuity. Right? And we also see that by when we are dealing with the rational function and doing the factoring of our limit, we were able to cancel these out. We remember from college algebra, pre-calculus, what have you, the math that you took before this, when we can cancel out factors like this in a rational function, usually what that means is there's something going on here, namely a hole, right? So we call removable discontinuity a hole, okay? So we've found that at x equals three, our function is undefined, or our value of our function is undefined, but our limit exists, making this a removable discontinuity. So for x equals 3, we solve that. Now, let's look at what happens at x equals negative 10. Okay? Just like normal, we're going to start by asking ourselves, does the value f of negative 10 exist? So let's start evaluating f of negative 10. So we get this. So we get negative 10 minus 3 on top over negative 10 squared plus 7 times negative 10. Let me extend this out a little bit, minus 30. So our numerator becomes negative 10 minus 3, or negative 13. The denominator, negative 10 squared is 100, minus 70, minus 30. So we get negative 13 over 0. We can't divide by 0. We know that's a big mathematical no-no. So the value f of negative 10 is undefined as well. Okay. So again, once we reach that the value of f of our value of x that we're trying to evaluate at, once we see that f of negative 10 is undefined, we know that f of x is not continuous at that point. So f of x is not continuous, I'm going to abbreviate there, at x equals, okay, e equals negative 10. There you go, make that work. So now that we've determined that f of x is not continuous at x equals negative 10, what we ask ourselves next is what type of discontinuity happens at x equals negative 10. In order to do that, we need to look at the limit as x approaches negative 10. So we're going to look at the limit as x approaches negative 10 of x minus 3 over x squared plus 7x minus 30. When we did the pass to the limit of this right here, by doing f of negative 10 by evaluating this, what we found was that we didn't get returned an indeterminate form. We still got an undefined value, but we didn't get an indeterminate form when we talk about limits. So whenever we get one of those, we kind of can't use the factoring trick or multiplying by the conjugate. What we can do instead is we need to look at the behavior of the function and see what happens as x approaches negative 10. What we're also gonna do is we're going to say that when we're evaluating the limit of this function as x approaches negative 10, we are getting closer and closer and closer arbitrarily to negative 10. So since we're arbitrarily close to negative 10 in this case, we can really just, without any pun intended, remove this removable discontinuity from our function and say that the two functions are equivalent, right? So let's go ahead and write down what I'm thinking here. So when close to negative 10, namely far away from 3, the functions the first one being the original function that we had and one over x plus 10, the factored form where we remove that removable discontinuity, are equivalent. They'll return the same values so long as we're not dealing with the x value of three. Because we evaluated that when x equals three, we get a removable discontinuity and there's a hole here, but that hole doesn't exist in this graph. So what we're gonna do instead is in instead of trying to analyze the behavior of this function, we are going to analyze the factored form, not because we factored it, but because the functions themselves are equivalent so long as we are nowhere near 3. Okay?
So what we're going to really end up doing is we're going to evaluate the one-sided limits. X approaches negative 10 from the left of 1 over X plus 10. And the limit as X approaches negative 10 from the right of 1 over X plus 10. Okay, so since we're using this function here, this 1 over X plus 10, let's take a little flashback to pre-calculus college algebra when we graphed rational functions like this. What does this x plus 10 in the denominator, what does that do to the graph of this function? We know that when the denominator of this type of function equals 0, we get a vertical asymptote at that x value. So namely, at negative 10, which is ironic, that's what we're evaluating, but at negative 10, we're going to get a vertical asymptote in our graph, right? So it's going to look something like this. Let's suppose this is negative 10. That's not a straight line by any means of the imagination. But as we get to negative 10, we have this vertical asymptote because our denominator would be 0 if we plugged in negative 10. So let's see what happens as x approaches negative 10 from the left, so coming from this direction. As we get closer and closer to negative 10, we have negative 12, negative 11, negative 10 and a half. We're going to get differences or sums, whichever way you look at the operation, that are going to be getting smaller and smaller in our denominator which makes this fraction arbitrarily larger and larger, but they're still going to stay negative. So as this function approaches negative 10 from the left, we're going to grow towards the negative infinity direction here. So the limit from the left is negative infinity. Now, this would be enough to tell us that there's an infinite discontinuity here at x equals negative 10, which is what the question asks us to give, right? We'd be fine with that. Because so long as we analyze one of the left, one of the one-sided limits to be a positive or negative infinity, that would tell us that we have an infinite discontinuity at that point in question, namely x equals negative 10. So we could be done there. What we're going to do for full sake of analyzing this problem is we're also going to look at x approaching negative 10 from the right. So as x approaches negative 10 from the right, this sum or difference, again, whichever way you want to look at it, is going to be growing smaller and smaller, but the difference or the sum is going to stay positive. So the denominator is going to be growing smaller and smaller, meaning the fraction, the actual value is going to grow towards the positive infinity direction because we're going to have a positive over a positive. So the, limits actually, the limit actually doesn't even exist because this approach is negative infinity and this approach is positive infinity. But since either one of the one-handed limits that we look at in this case, approaches either a positive or negative infinity, we know that at x equals negative 10, the function is not continuous, and we receive a infinite discontinuity.